Today I'd like to discuss using calipers, and more precisely than that, pun intended, using a decimal equivalence chart to interpret the number you get from your calipers and how useful it could be. There's a lot of thought that goes into this and using that number, you should be able to read one of these and one of these. I always have a decimal equivalence chart in my work area. I have one at work at my desk for drawing. I have them everywhere. They're very useful and I don't think the calipers are useful without one of these in addition to it. Using a decimal equivalence chart is paramount to being a good machinist, a good maker and engineer, anything. If you're going to make something or measure anything in this precise manner to three decimal points, then a decimal equivalence chart is for you. It has various types of information on here and I'll go over all of it through here. Uh, from taps to drill sizes to nominal fractions to crazy fractions you didn't know the decimal equivalent for. And it's very useful because you won't actually know those all the time. You might have a quarter inch memorized, but you might not have 15 sixty-fourths memorized. So it's very important. You get one of these in almost any machinist store where they sell tools for end mills and drills and specialty tooling. Typically they'll give them away for free. Even some of your random tooling places around town will typically give them to you. If not, you can find one online through Sarah.com and they have a really great one you can print out. Might not be cardstock like this, but at least you could use it and print it out and refer to it. So I would highly recommend getting one of those and using it in conjunction with measuring with your calipers. So without further ado, let's move on to actually using the calipers because that's actually the easy part in my opinion. These are your dial calipers. They have various features on here for measuring depth or OD or ID. OD stands for outer diameter and ID stands for inner diameter. Typically you open the calipers by rotating this knurled wheel. You can see here you just use it, use your thumb on it to open it and close it. Now to measure OD, you measure in between these two prongs here. And to measure ID, you stick it inside a hole and use those smaller pointy prongs there. Now, technically you can measure depth as well. So the distance from here to the bottom of that is actually the depth of your hole. So let's say just for giggles, I wanna measure this block of wood. This is technically a one by three piece of wood. The dimensions will vary. One thing you'll learn is few things are actually the sizes they say they are. It's kind of like a two by four is three and a half by one and a half. This is a three by one, technically three quarters of an inch thick, barely. Even the three quarters of an inch is gonna be a lie. When you're going to the third decimal place, everything's gonna vary, it's not gonna be dead on. Very few things in less precision machine will be 0 0.750. But let's see what this measures. So it's actually really close. You can see, you read on this set of numbers first on this scale, and you read to the closest number without going over first. So if I were going over that eight, it would be 0.8 to start for the first decimal place. But since it doesn't quite get to the 0.8, it's just under the point, point 0.8, so therefore it's point 0.7. And then after that, you refer to the dial, and then point 0.75, and then you're two and a half ticks past point 0.75, so it's point 0.752. But you can also go one step further here visually and see that it's half a thousandth in between. So I would say it's point 0.7525. I would say it's point 0.7525. So really, honestly, the, the wood is actually pretty close. It's closer than I would have thought. So if you wanted to measure a hole, let's say you have a piece like this. This is an old component from my, uh, this is a component from my phone boom. I think I made this a three quarter inch hole, but I don't remember. But if you want to measure the hole size, yeah, that would be uh, definitely not 0 0.75. That would be 0 0.8, uh, 0 0.808 close to it. And typically you'll want to move these around a little bit inside the hole just so it settles to a number you feel comfortable with. See now I'm getting points 809. Oh. Now so that's OD and ID. So if I wanted to measure the height of this, if I couldn't pick it up, if I couldn't pick this up and measure it with the um, clamps like so, if I could pick it up and do that, I could technically I could technically do this 
and measure the depth. And then it stops where it's supposed to go. But theoretically, I'm getting a little different measurement here. You gotta be careful because measurement is up for interpretation. So I was getting 0.7525 before, and now I'm getting 0.7635. So that was weird. So maybe I'm getting something weird now. So now I'm getting a little over here. The wood's gonna fluctuate, but it's still, the depth gauge is a little sketchy. They actually have micrometer gauges called depth gauges that use a micrometer way of measuring that can measure depth like this a lot better than my calipers can. Calipers are kind of an approximation for that sort of thing. So you wanna really keep this as a reference. You can get really close to what you need and it depends on the needs of your project. If you're a machinist, you're going to need uh, these and micrometers and all kinds of different stuff. And I'll cover micrometers in another video. I actually have a short right now that you can watch that shows basically how to read a micrometer, but those are a little trickier than uh, using these. So knowing that we have a measurement of 0.752, right? If I have 0.752, what is the decimal equivalent of that? Looking at my chart, you can see a lot of things here. You can, there's a lot of information here, really. You have your decimal equivalents. So you have your fractions and your decimal equivalents here. You have also these numbers represent numbered drill bits and their size in decimal form. So that's another reference there. So really you should look at this as a reference for all your drill bit sizes. You know, they have millimeter conversions here, which is nice to have. They have 164 drill bit size and all your nominal fractions, all your drill bits, letters, fractions, and numbers, and metric. So technically, maybe some of you didn't know that, that there are four types of drill sizes. That's a, something you should keep in mind whenever you're doing all kinds of stuff. Machinists typically have to use these for different taps and different hole sizes for different kinds of parts. Looking at this, so we're looking for 0.752. Uh, right there. So 752 is actually not on here. This is the ambiguity I want you to be comfortable with. You, it is nowhere near 49 64 or three quarters. So it's 0 0.752. There's some range in here that is not covered in a decimal equivalence chart, but you can call it 753 thousandths. You can call it 752 thousandths. And that's just important to keep in reference, you know, or you can just round down and say it's a three quarter inch piece. Keeping all this in mind, so you have your drill bit decimal equivalents here. So another part of this is tap sizes. So when you're creating threads, you drill a hole with a certain size drill and a certain size thread. And you can go over here to this chart and say, I want a quarter 20 bolt. Well, what size drill do you need to do? So you have tap size this is what we decided, what screw size we're using. You have cutting tap drill size. So if you go back down to, go down to quarter 20, you use a number seven drill bit. And, which is something interesting about this, if you go and see a number seven drill bit, number seven drill bit is actually 0.201. So you have to drill it almost 49,000 smaller to make a quarter 20 thread. That accounts for the material needed for the threads to be cut into a hole. So you also have metric tap drill sizes for that as well. And you have your pipe tap drill sizes. These are for uh, MPT, so National Pipe Thread, so that's kind of a coarse. MPTF, which is a fine thread for MPT fittings or threads. And NPS, so that's straight thread, it's not tapered, so na uh, National Pipe Thread is technically tapered. NPS is straight thread, so it would be this size, and then you have NPSF, which is a fine thread. And technically you have coarse and fine thread on your tap sizes all in here too, so say a Quarter 20 is a coarse thread and quarter 28 is a fine thread. So it's UNC and that's UNF. For some of you, this might seem a little basic. For some of you, it might seem a little complex. Interpreting and reading a set of calipers is relatively easy, although numerous people could get different numbers when using this. And you kind of saw that with the depth gauge, how it could fluctuate using one measuring method versus the other with the same instrument. So you always have to be careful of that. And you could have three different people measure the same thing and they might all come up with different numbers and you have to kind of use your best judgment to figure out what's most correct. Normally you don't have to go into this kind of accuracy. So if you're a woodworker, you shouldn't even go anywhere near this. 
But having a set of calipers is really nice because you can get really close and get really fine in your measurements and you can actually be really accurate with your production, whatever you're doing. I've shown that 3D printing and some of my other videos, one thousandth could actually dictate failure if you're looking for a press fit. You really gotta be careful how you interpret the numbers on this. And this chart can actually help you do that. And it can help you in numerous ways. Can't tell you how many times I've looked references in my life to see what measurement I get off of this and what fraction it's closest to. And it really, really helps me. So um, it's just to consider, you know, there is some ambiguity in here. There's, it doesn't cover every single decimal place ever. You have to be okay with figuring it out. This chart will come in handy if you're using micrometer or calipers or depth gauges or anything that measures to this degree. So I would highly recommend getting both. If you don't have a set of calipers, go for it. This Sterrett pair is actually really good. If you don't have a decimal equivalence chart, go either go print one out for free at your house or go beg a tooling store to give you one for free. Usually they'll market it like this. They'll have brand names on top. So they're great with giving it to you. You know, tell them you, tell me you work in a shop somewhere. Maybe they'll give it to you for free. I got this one for free and it was super easy. I have a short detailing all of this. I really couldn't cover all the subtle details. And so I figured this was important. And so I figured I'd publish this video and see how it goes. Uh, anyway, if you have any questions, please ask below. If you have any suggestions, please comment below. I want to thank all the people who have subscribed, but if you haven't, maybe, maybe I've earned it in this video. I don't know. We'll see. I appreciate everybody who's already subscribed to my channel. So thank you very much. And thanks for your time. See you next time.